Let's talk now about conditional formatting. Conditional formatting allows us to change the format of a cell if that cell meets certain specified criteria. So we outline those criteria, and if the cell meets that criteria, then its appearance will change. Now its format only is all this will change, not the actual contents of that cell. This can be helpful, for example, to show us items which deviate from what we expected. We can set up conditional formatting so we don't have to look and really analyze the data quite so much as we can have its appearance change so it really will just jump right out at us and tell us that, hey, something is perhaps wrong. Let's do some examples here. The first example I've come up with is a very simple income statement. And I've given you data for several different time periods, five of them here. Now, you notice that some of them result in a net income and some of them result in a net loss. But what I would like to do is, if there is a net loss, I would like to change the appearance of that cell. These are the cells that I'm concerned about. So I'm going to highlight B5 through F5. And what I would like to happen is, if we have a net loss, I would like the background color of the cell to become red, and I would like the font to become white. And that would just bring it to my attention so I couldn't overlook it. I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting. I'm going to go to Highlight Cells Rule. And we have to decide, how do we know if something is a net loss? Well, there are a couple of ways of figuring that. We could go and compare the revenues and the expenses, or we could just realize that a net loss would be a negative number. A net income would give me a positive number. A net loss would give me a negative number. A negative number is a number that's less than zero. So I could set it up to highlight cells, which are less than. Now notice, I can either put in a cell reference or I can actually type in a number. In this case, I'm going to type in the number zero because the net loss would always be less than zero. It's not something that's subject to change. A net loss is always going to be less than zero is a deciding factor. Now it says, what do you want sales to look like if they meet that test? I'm going to change this default here, and I'm going to give it a custom format. And I'm going to give it a fill of red, and I'm going to give it a font color of white. If I liked, I could give it a border also, and I could change the actual appearance of the numbers as well. But I think that will do us for now, so let's tell it OK and OK. And now do you see where the items which are a net loss have changed their appearance? Let's go back and change some other data here. Let me go back and change the amount of expenses here. And now this one has a net loss, and automatically its appearance has changed as well. So my first example of conditional formatting allowed the appearance of the cell to change if its value was less than zero. Let's do another example. Here is where we have our inventory count. We have apples, oranges, grapes, bananas, and pears. Here's what our inventory records say we should have on hand. Here is what we physically do have on hand. And here is the amount of my shortage. Now, what we can do next is to set up our, our shortage to change appearance, again, if it meets certain criteria. Maybe we're not concerned if we're just short by one unit. But perhaps we're concerned if we are short by two units or more. Into a cell, let's type what our actual cutoff level is. And I'm going to say that it is simply the number two. So if my inventory shortage is two or greater, then I want its appearance to change. If it's not two or greater, I don't want it to change. What I want to change are the actual numbers themselves, their format. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to go Conditional Formatting. Highlight Cells Rules. If this number is greater than or equal to 2, and that isn't an option right here. So I'm going to go down to More Rules. I get the option to format only cells that contain a value greater than, well, I really want what? Equal to or greater than. Click the downward arrow. They give me the option of greater than or equal to. And I'm going to go here. I'm not going to type in the number 2 because I want this to be flexible where it can change. Anytime the cutoff level here changes, I want this to change also. So I'm simply going to click in that cell G1. So anytime this value is greater than this value, we're going to change its appearance. 
Let's go to Format. Perhaps we'll give this a fill color of a bright blue. We'll give it a font, perhaps um, a red. We could give it a double underline if we'd like. And that ought to do us. Let's tell it OK and OK. Now notice two items changed. Why is that? Because this one had a shortage of 3, which is equal to or greater than 2. This one had a shortage of 4, which is equal to or greater than 2 also. What if we change my cutoff level? My cutoff level says I want to be told anytime I have a shortage only of 4 or more. If I change this to 4, well now my oranges no longer met that criteria. My pears still meet that criteria, therefore their appearance has changed. We'll change it back to 1. And notice we now have three items that meet that criteria. We told Excel to change the format of these cells if they were equal to or greater than this cell. So if G1 changed, that would affect what happened in these cells as well. Let's look at an example that deals with dates. I've listed some folks here, and I've listed when their birthday is. I have a function right here which is pulling in today's date. What I would like to happen is if their birthday is later on in the year, in other words, it has not already passed, I would like for it to change appearance. So I'm going to highlight these, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules. If this is, again, greater than today, sometime after today is when I would like to know it, greater than, let's see, well, if it's greater than this cell, B1, what do I want to do to it? Well, again, I'm going to give it a custom format. I'm going to give it a purple background and perhaps a yellow font. And that would tell me these still are coming. Tell it OK. OK. So now we see today is October 15th. These two birthdays still remain later on in the year. These have already passed. I don't need to worry about them now. What if I go back and I change Ron's birthday? Maybe I had it incorrect. Now, it is November 11th, it is later on in the year, that still has not passed, so it therefore meets the test and the conditional formatting will change its appearance also. What if we needed to come back and make a change to that? Maybe we said, oh, purple is not really what we wanted. We can highlight these cells, go to conditional formatting. Now let's go to manage rules. Manage rules. It pulls up the conditional formatting that applies to these particular cells. What if I want to change it? I can click here. I can tell it to edit the rule. I can go back and change the format. Maybe instead of a purple background, I want to make it teal. Tell it OK and OK. What if I was in a different cell? As a matter of fact, I couldn't even remember where the conditional formatting was on this worksheet. Well, I can go to conditional formatting. I can go back to manage rules. Notice by default, it pulls up the rules for the current set selection. I can click the downward arrow and change it to this worksheet, and it will pull up all the conditional formatting rules that apply to this particular worksheet. Again, I see the one rule I'm interested in. I can go back and edit it. I can delete it if I would like to do so. I can make any changes to it, again, that I would like to. So here we compared it to a date instead of to a numeric amount. We also can use some formulas instead. Let's select my light bulbs. Here's what I would like to happen. If my quantity on hand is less than the reorder point, I would like these words to change. So if the quantity on hand is less than the reorder point, I want this time the words to change in A2. Conditional formatting. Let's go to a new rule. Let's go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. We want to format values where this formula is true. Well, if B2 is less than C2, I want to change its appearance. So we'll go to Format. Again, I will give it a different color. Go for some Clemson colors this time. Tell it OK. Now, it didn't change appearance right now. Why? Because we it's not time for us to order this product. 
Let's make it 30 instead. And we see now that the words are changed based upon looking at these two particular cells. Now, what I'd like to do next is to take this, grab my Format Painter, and copy them down. But it doesn't appear to be working quite right, does it? For example, it changed the paper, and it should not have. The reason it's not um, formatting properly has to do with relative and absolute. So let's go back. I'm going to go back to A2, Conditional Formatting, Manage My Rules. I'm going to edit this rule. And now, notice it had my B2 be absolute. So if this format was copied somewhere else, it always kept looking at B2, not at B3 if it was on B3, or not at B4 if it was on B4. So really, this is an absolute cell reference now. We need to make it be relative. And I'm going to do that either by deleting the dollar signs or using the F4 key. The same thing with the C2. Right now, it would always, wherever I took this format and painted it to, still be looking at C2. We want it to look at C3 if we're on row 3, C4 if we're on row 4, C5 if we're on row 5. So again, I need to make this cell reference be relative also. So now I say if B2 is less than C2, I want it to change appearance. Well, that's what it's going to do right now in cell A1. Tell it OK. OK, I'm going to grab my paintbrush, my Format Painter. Painted them down. Now, what did it do? It did change color for the envelopes. Why? Because we need to order more of those. Let me up the quantity on hand to be 30, and you'll see now it does not change color. Pens, it changes because we need to order those. It did not change paper because we don't need to order that. So I had to make those individual elements in there be relative so I could then use my Format Painter and copy it on down. Let's show how we can actually make it change based upon a comparison even to text. What I'm going to do is to put an if in here so that if I need to order now, it's going to give me a message that says order now. I can go to fx, get my if function. Okay, Remember the first part is a logical test. How do I know when I need to order? Well, I need to order when the quantity on hand is less than the reorder point. If the quantity on hand is less than the reorder point, I want to say order now. If that is not the case, I'm going to tell it no order yet. Because if B2 is not less than C2, then I don't need to order any yet. I'll tell it OK. Now for this first item, it tells me to order now. Why? Because the quantity on hand is less than the reorder point. I'm going to get my fill handle, double click it. It'll copy it on down to where I need it to go. And notice it's saying order now, no order yet, and so forth. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this text because maybe I want to change the format of this particular cell also. Let's go to conditional formatting, manage rules. We're going to give it a new rule. We want to format only cells that contain a cell value which is equal to, and we're looking for the words order now, order now, exclamation mark. If the cell value says order now, well, we want it to change appearance. Um, I'm going to make this one be some Carolina colors here. Tell it OK, and OK, and OK. And now, notice what I could do then is I could compare to text. So that's the only thing I did different now, just to review that one. I came in on that rule, and I told it to compare to text instead of telling it um, to compare to a particular cell.